Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, and everyone inside and outside the ballpark. My name is Novid Player, and welcome to episode 25 of the Novid Notes podcast, where we talk about many different types of creators inside of the platform. With me today, I have one of my personal favorite DJ World creators, as well as VTuber, content creator, and all the like, uh, Miss Reth Sogan. Reth, how you doing? Hello. Hello, everyone. Doing pretty good today. Chilling so, out. Yeah, of course. Thank you for coming on the podcast, first and foremost. Of course. Yeah. Uh, so I was going to say, you know, for the general listening audience or viewing audience at home, uh, you know, what exactly do you do inside of the VR chat platform? Oh, too much. I feel like I mean, <laughs> I do. I've, I've brought on a lot of things that um, I, I never thought I'd be doing on this platform. I started out as a shit poster. I'd go around doing like a Seth Rogen impression. And that was what I did for a long time. But eventually, like I moved on from that and kind of found my own voice in that. Um, and I started doing VTubing. I got really interested in VTubing and that whole thing and so, so after I started doing that like things started happening like I started meeting a couple really cool people um in fact a lot of really cool people more than a couple I would say and then from there I went on to look at like oh what if I made my own avatar and I, I did all that stuff but I didn't even start doing that until like 1500 hours in so made an avatar got really into unity uh, for the past year or so and you know while i was kind of vtubing and coming up with that i eventually started making worlds and i got really interested in making like kind of immersive worlds for vr chat more so um club focused and um you know focused on like really cool like video experiences like audio visual experiences um so i got yeah i got started with that too and yeah it's been kind of a long journey and i'm just about to hit 2500 hours in this game <laughs> 20, I mean, 2,500 hours is definitely no easy feat, you know, to say the least, especially to yeah. keep a keep a headset. Oh, I guess there's desktop too, but um, to keep your yeah, headset yeah. on for that long is definitely a, whoo! Yeah, I know, yeah. I know my hours are, well, uh, I think it's only like a tiny bit higher. I think I, I, think I just surpassed 3,000 yeah. recently, so yeah, it's wow. definitely. Wow, good for you. <laughs> yeah, I, I never thought I would, I never thought I would be that high. I, someone asked me about it, I was like uh i don't know looked at it over i think it's like 3048 i think uh i was like what the <laughs> hell i was like it does not feel like that long um well, yeah. awesome so I, I was gonna say uh out of curiosity what kind of got you into mm -hmm. like the whole club venue dj scene well it was really funny so my my first world is a world i made called octahedron um and that world i was just focused on creating my first vr chat world i didn't have any expectations or anything like that i used to build on uh, minecraft all the time and i really loved that but i was like wow i am so sick of building with these fucking cubes all the time like i really <laughs> want to i want to build large-scale things in a quick fashion but i was like how how does unity work i don't how does that shit go like i i actually don't understand so um um, I actually met with my friend Chopau. He's a really good friend of mine. Um, and, you know, I was like, how do I do this? You know, I asked him a bunch of questions, saw what he was up to, saw what he was doing. And what was crazy was like, I really got into it. I really, really got into it on my first world. And um, I made these really intricate, well, not that intricate, octahedron structures that are just, you know, 3D models I found for free. And, um, there's just eight polygon models, but I put video players on them, on the inside and the outside of them. So you could like walk inside of them and be kind of surrounded by these huge video screens that would go up to like 8K resolution. And during that world, like building process, people were like, yeah, like this big one here you have, like what if you made that into a DJ venue and you like had like a dance floor here? And I was like, yeah, that'd be really cool. So instead of, like redoing that world i said no nah, i'm just gonna make a new one and that's where sherpinski came from uh my my second world and my club world that i work with um and i just like went crazy on, on that thing like it was 350 hours of work to create that venue and uh over time people would come up to me and be like oh you should add this you should add this and i'm like I don't know how to do that. Like, how do I, <laughs> I don't know how to do that. <laughs> like, how do I do that? And I'd like, I'd, I'd feel like weird. And then I'd just go look it up and I'd be like, oh, 
oh, that's not that hard. Oh, okay. And then I just implement stuff. So I put like a upper deck and um, like some mushrooms below to like give it like a real interesting kind of dance floor look. Um, and yeah, I just kind of found my own building style and found my own style with like creating a club. And um, it was like Field of Dreams where if you build it, they will come. And uh, they being the DJs, um, I showed a bunch of people this stuff. Uh, including some people like Eulogy, who's done a lot of uh, really interesting DJ work in this. Uh, I showed you as well, because I know you DJ too. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of other people came by. Like, once I had, like, a couple DJs in this server, it was like, oh, hey, let me invite my other six DJ friends. I was like, cool, cool. And then they would invite their DJ friends. I'm like, okay. Um, I'm getting a little stressed out now because now I got nine DJs on this first event we're ever doing. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was like a huge success. I mean, we had like 260 people come through the first night. So I was like, wow, this is awesome. Um, and then I've only had three events so far, but the second and third event were also pretty good. Less population, but like more uh, long sets and stuff like that. I started doing one hour sets. I started DJing myself too. Um, I don't have a board or anything right now, but in the future, I'd love to get like a DJ deck and really start to learn mixing and start to get in depth with it. Because right now I just use virtual DJ and my mouse. Um, but yeah, like, yeah, it's, it's been an amazing opportunity. Hell yeah. Hey, hey, ain't nothing, ain't nothing wrong with, you know, virtual DJ. Virtual DJ is an amazing tool. Yeah, no. We're not, not <laughs> sponsored. Is. It really is. Not sponsored. Man, I, not hey, sponsored. No, hey not virtual sponsored. DJ, if you want to, if you want to, if you want to sponsor the podcast, <laughs> I use your software since fucking 2016. I pay for a month to month yeah. license. <laughs> Give me a free lifetime yeah. submission. We'll we'll call it even. Um. Anyway. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah. No, virtual DJ is an amazing tool. Um, it definitely helps a lot of DJs. Uh, get started out with you know mixing and you know doing awesome stuff. Uh, so kind of uh, out of curiosity. So what what made you come up with the name uh, Sarpinski? Uh, Sierpinski is based off of um, this mathematician. He created this uh, numerical like fractal set called the Sierpinski set, and it's like where these triangles become larger triangles. It's like what the Triforce is uh, mm -hmm. in Zelda. It's like that. And so I had these octahedrons that I found, and there was like this Sierpinski octahedron set. So I ended up just calling it that because I had these like like triangulated octahedrons within the world and i was like okay i'll just go with that that sounds like a really cool name and nobody else has a world called sherpinski so i put that in there and um only two people have come up to me and been like oh is this based off the sherpinski fractal set and i'm like yes <laughs> how'd you guess that shit like nobody knows this and like the first night two people guessed it. i was like oh shit okay well some people know about math i don't know shit about math i just like the name because it sounded like really different from every other club i'd been to and i wanted to have like my own club name and like really kind of get a, a personality out of it too so yeah no fair no that's it's i never would have guessed to be honest i would never would have guessed that yeah <laughs> um yeah but yeah, so you've done, you said three events so far, because um, I know, I think mm -hmm. it was either the first or the second one you had invited me to, and I was unfortunately uh, busy, I think it was, yeah, it was the birthday one, uh, when it fell on my birthday, yeah, and yeah. I, yeah, yeah. Um, it, it, timing, timing, like, was, woo, timing was rough around that time, um, yeah, <laughs> So yeah, I was gonna say with the events, so you said, you, you said it was about 280 people came in and out around around that time yeah about about 250 260 in that first event um and we had like 60 people in the instance at once um at one point and we were we were expecting to maybe fill it but also i was like i have no idea what to expect i was like if five people show up i'm happy like i was le legitimately like i have no idea how many people are going to show up to this event and like on the first night yeah it was just like it just shot up the um amount of people who had been in there and it was like really um you know, I got pretty, I got like pretty emotional, like at the end of the day, because I was like, for one, I was tired and the event was over at this point, but I was just like, I was so happy to have everyone come through. And I was like, oh shit, I like created a community all of a sudden. That was, <laughs> that was nuts. <laughs> no, it, I, it, it happens, you know, communities can start yeah. up on a whim and, you know, it only takes one and it takes one idea. That's all it takes. I mean, a lot of, I think a lot of communities can probably 
probably say the same thing in that regard. Um, Absolutely. So I guess one of the yeah. one of the, one of the next questions that I was going to ask in that regard. So you know, you you went from Minecraft, you know, into Unity. Um, out of curiosity, like, what was in your opinion? What was like the biggest struggle going into Unity and making a world like Slurpinski? I mean, it's like, what is a hierarchy? What is that? What is the inspector? <laughs> like, what is all this shit I'm looking at? You know, it was like, I'd open Unity and I would just like want to cry sometimes. Because I had built stuff in um, avatars, so I had experience with like, like I made this avatar and, um, you know, it's it's become a part of me in a way too, and like my own ad identity too. And um, like understanding how to uh build worlds is a lot different than avatars but i think there's a lot of crossover there because it is the same engine you are still working with stuff like shaders you're working with stuff like that but going from minecraft to unity is just like such a big thing because i started using world edit you know only in the past few years with with minecraft and like having the ability to just make a gigantic object scale it up immediately i was like oh my god this is so much more freeing i don't think i ever want to play this shitty block game ever again but also i'm i'm still i'm still i have a crippling addiction to minecraft so I, I don't take what i say uh at uh yeah take that with a handful of salt not even a grain of salt you know and i i love minecraft though like it it really brought me into like a creative space like a really zen space and i feel the same way about unity now uh now that i understand it over the past like four months or so it's like okay shit i really have like a a decently solid foundation now and i really want to get into more complex techniques and really get into stuff like blender as well which is another gigantic learning curve um so i get to experience that too um, but yeah, like it's, it's an intensely, um, fun thing once you get started until you bake the lights and they all break and you cry and, um, things break in the world and you cry again and <laughs> you get to fix them for six hours. Yeah, other than that, it's, it's a fantastic experience. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say that's, that's very, very relatable in that regard. I, I couldn't tell you the amount of times that I was told that my lighting was broke in my world, for example. <laughs> oh my God. And I, I don't know if I ever told you this, but, um, and or I don't even think I told the podcast this yet, but, um, no. So the world lighting is fixed for the hangout. Finally. Yeah, I know it's, it's been out for so long. I finally fixed it. But the thing that broke it and the thing that makes me so mad that this is what broke it, you'll never guess in an ironic sense. It was the Uganda knuckles model that I had in my world. <laughs> I shit you not. I don't know where, I don't remember if I received it, but I, I had gotten the model from somewhere um, or somebody had gave it to me or somebody sent me a link for it. And I put it in the world and it had two light sources on it. One was called Hemi and one was literally called Sun. And I'm like, are you kidding? Oh. And it broke. Those light sources literally covered the entire map twofold. And that's why it seemed so bright in the world for the longest time. It's Oh my god. Goofy <laughs> goofy as hell. But yeah, check your <laughs> check your light sources, world creators, because you never know if some random object is gonna <laughs> screw with your lighting. But yeah, it's yeah. it's the goofiest shit. Um, but anyways, oh back, my God. back to you though. Now that I've gotten that off my chest. Um, <laughs> but so, um, I guess one of the things I wanted to ask, you know, because you kind of explained how you got into the venue scene, but. You know, what mm -hmm. kind of drove you to come to VR chat in the first place? Like what what brought you to VR chat? Well, it's a tale as old as time. It was 2020. Uh it was January. I got a headset, I got a Samsung Odyssey Plus headset. It's a uh Windows Mixed Reality headset and I'd gotten that and I was like, wow, this is really cool. I want to go try this VR chat thing. And I had some really, really funny experiences my first night that involved something of a, uh, a guy dancing and uh, somebody asking for his number. And then he said, oh, you can have my Discord. And I was like, that is so funny to me. Uh, just watching <laughs> these people at like Void Club and stuff back in the day, I was like, oh my God, this is insane. I got to keep playing this. You know, it, was, it didn't push me away. It just pulled me in. 
And then like March 2020 comes around and this uh, random huge event happens where uh, everyone has to stay home for a little while. And um, I ended up just being like, oh, so now I can game. And then I would just like put on my headset every day and I started meeting people like around the world. And um, like one of my first friends is a guy from Japan. He, he um, you know, got to know me because I was just doing like Jojo references in this one Japanese world. And then eventually I started learning Japanese as a result of like hanging out with him and hanging out with his friends and like kind of getting like immersion into the language. And so I start learning the language and, you know, I'd known some stuff, like a few phrases from beforehand. I had been to Japan before, but like learning, learning about that, going into going deep into that culture and then meeting like a really solid group of friends and staying friends with them up until now still. And, um, like continuing to meet people, continuing to do stuff, continuing to, um, act like Seth Rogen. That was like another thing I did for a long time is like, I would be permanently in a Seth Rogen voice. Like, um, and for those of you wondering, this is what we're talking about. <laughs> and uh, so I can I can switch into that at any time. Uh, and <laughs> it's just like really easy for me to do that. And and so like for a long time, I would just use that voice. But eventually I found my own voice and like really um, got into just being myself online and, and kind of having Reth Sogan as like a, you know, a username was always like, a, oh my God, can you do the Seth Rogen voice? And I'd be like, no, dude, what are you talking about? <laughs> Who the fuck is Seth Rogen? <laughs> and then like, I would <laughs> like break people down that way. And like people would just laugh. And I just, I just thought it was fun to just like be like that sometimes, but not all the time, you know, and, and learning about uh, my own like identity, like in regards to gender too, that was like another big thing here. And that that's like a more recent thing that happened for me. And shit, VR chat makes that easy <laughs> for so many people who are uh, dealing with gender identity. It's like, oh, you want to be in a female avatar 24 seven? Well, yeah, I mean, like, um, go for it. <laughs> like that, that's it, you know? And, and yeah, it's, um, it's a really beautiful space and I want to continue to create here and continue to be in this, in this space. I think it's just fantastic. Absolutely. And yeah, I would say with VR chat, I mean, really with like any like VR game, VR chat's the biggest one, of course, but like when it comes mm -hmm. to VR games, you literally can be whatever. And that could be a good or a bad thing Absolutely. depending on how you look yeah. at it. Um, yeah. <laughs> The amount of avatars I have seen in this game uh, is definitely probably way too many for my own liking. I don't, yes. Even, yes. I don't even know. I don't even know. I don't even want to know what the number is. Could you imagine if it had like a tally mark of how many unique avatars you saw? Bro, I easily, easily probably at least like 10,000. Easily. Probably more. Yeah. yeah. Because there's literally so many. I, oh man, I couldn't even, I can't even think of that. So I, I guess kind of... And half of them are like... Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. Right, go oh, okay, ahead. I was going to say, like, half of those avatars that you see, you know, at the 10,000 are, like, the same, like, uh, Gumroad e-girl over and over, but with, like, two differences, you know? And it's like, you see so many of those, and you see so much variance between that stuff, too. And I think that's, like, what's really cool is you can be literally anything. People are like, so you're going to be, like, an anime girl, a furry, or whatever? It's like, no, like... I've seen people walk around as like a, a toilet that move the toilet seat moves when they talk. You know, I've seen stuff like that. <laughs> it's like, oh, wow, yeah. that sounds crazy. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's more of like if you if you know, you know type situation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, oh my gosh, yeah. There's way too much infinite possibilities when it comes to avatars oh, yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So I, I got a you know kind of a goofy question, but since we're on the topic, mm -hmm. uh, what's like the most sure. what's like the most cursed avatar you have ever seen when it comes to this platform? <laughs> I don't know if I can even say it on YouTube. <laughs> okay, I will I will do a censored version for YouTube. Um, so I I love going to this world called Poppy Street, and in Poppy Street, it's literally like the Japanese version of the Black Cat. So if you don't know what the black cat is, it's like uh, all things, every everything kind of goes there. A lot of trolls, a lot of crazy shit happens. But, but it's got a lot of like Japanese people drinking. It's it's based off of uh, like uh, Japanese drinking districts in like Tokyo and stuff. And 
So I, I was going there one night and I turned on this one guy's avatar and his avatar was a secondary skyline surrounding this little cityscape that's already pre-made, you know, within the world. So his avatar was like a secondary skyline and on the skyline there were billboards of a adult variety uh, all playing gifs of an adult variety and uh, oh, that's no. all I can say about that oh, and it no. surrounded the entire map with um, images of an adult nature uh, let's just put it that way and uh, I was just laughing my ass off I was like I have never seen anything like this um and that's that's probably the most cursed one and uh it was also like one of the funniest things i've ever seen <laughs> fair fair no that's that's valid that's valid i've i've never heard of that type of i mean i've heard of like skyline avatars but to like have billboards yeah. of like adult variety gifts playing like that that's a new one i i've seen there's in public uh, too in it oh my lord yeah you know it sounds about right <laughs> <laughs> sounds about right knowing vr chat um yeah. but yeah no that's crazy i now now i'm all i'm envisioning is just seeing the bu billboards just in, in a like a black cat type area you know or gray pug yeah or, don't go to poppy street <laughs> don't go to poppy street <laughs> um but yeah no it's definitely that's hilarious um so yeah i was gonna say on a you know kind of similar topic to to the expense of mm -hmm. uh the the poppy street but um yes so out of curiosity because you, you've been around the club scene for a little bit you know i, I was mm -hmm. gonna say you know what what is it like as an event host you know to from your experience what is it like to like make an event and kind of get it rolling Oh God, it's, it's like, um, more scheduling than I thought and more wrangling than I thought of people. Like I've had people drop out of, of, of events now and, you know, randomly just like not show up to stuff. And that was like a, oh shit, we got to like keep this going, you know? And I had like a, I'm starting to have like showbiz moments. It's like, ah, that's showbiz baby. That's just the way the cookie crumbles, you know, that sort of stuff where it's like, oh, you gotta, you just gotta keep it going. You have to keep the event going if people drop out. Um, and that happened at the third event and, um, yeah, uh, you know who you are and, uh, anyways, <laughs> um, not mad, not mad, but you know, where were you? Um, it, it was, it's a lot of stuff like that where it's like, um, oh, I need to figure out when these people can go on. Cause now we have so many time zones, right? I have people from the UK playing at these events and I'm like, okay, you're going first because um it's like 2 30 in the morning when you're going on so we got to figure that out uh we got to get hammer time figured out too hammer time is if you don't know is a uh, app where you can put in your time in your time zone and then people can see what time that is for them so um that's a really important tool that all club you know all club um event creators need um to figure out like oh when are people going to be available because that is going to be super important in what when you can schedule people too. So yeah, it's um it's it's kind of it's kind of fun though. Like I have met so many really cool people out, out of this like and they um you know, and they have seen my effort in this cuz it's like I have been world creator and event host and event like manager all all in one. Um because I haven't like I I found people that I work with that would be able to do this stuff and have been able to do this stuff. It's just also like, oh shit, you know, I got to go through like this giant list every time we have an event and make sure everything's all good and then we're good to go. The venue's fine. The venue kind of take care takes care of itself in VR, uh, which is fantastic. Like all the systems are not broken. So well, right now, but um, <laughs> like making sure that's all good is not really something I think about when the event day comes, which is great. Fair enough. Uh, so yeah, because as you know knock knock on wood real quick um it, it's definitely uh worlds break as everyone knows it happens mm -hmm. so it's just waiting until the next usually when a world's finished it's usually the next unity update or next vr chat update that usually breaks the world and it's just the smallest little things <laughs> yeah it could be literally one Absolutely. it could literally be one line of code that just needs to be updated and that's that's the unfortunate part is when it's just that little yeah. tiny thing. 
I've seen it time and time again with uh many different worlds. It's uh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I was gonna say so kind of kind of to 180 you know because we've talked about you know the world mm-hmm. side of things so you also do content creation as well um so I, do. I guess one of the questions i wanted to ask first and foremost is like what drove you to that part of you know vr chat like what drove you to go into content yeah creation? um so like i was really interested in vtubing for a long time like i i'd started out like watching stuff like keys in the eye back in 2018 like she was like the, one of the first vtubers i ever saw and first of all i thought she was literally a uh, uh artificial intelligence and i didn't know what this shit was and uh, i was like convinced of that and like kind of played into that character i guess or like watched her play into this character and i became like immensely interested in vtubing and like what that Mm. space was like because people were able to play a character like wrestling almost and kind of stay in character but also have moments where they're interacting with an audience that's real life and i was like that's so cool um and so i decided to do vtubing um that was something i really enjoyed i had done streaming with face cam in the past but um yeah, eventually I was like, oh, I'll, I'll just go try VTubing. And um, I got like one of my VR chat models and I took it into Unity and did a couple things to make it track better and do stuff like that um, over time. And um, I really like the space. Like it's it's really fun to interact with a Twitch uh, audience, at least when they're there, right? Like when you, when you got zero views, that's uh, that's another thing. But um, when, when you get in in depth with an audience and you get people rating a stream and stuff like that it's really cool and i love um another thing i do is i i do like a weekly world hop with uh, my friend anti-crust and um you know we we really have a lot of fun with that we we kind of just go around worlds and i used to stream it all the time i don't really stream it anymore because i like it to be more of a community hangout and i'm able to talk with the people at the hangout rather than chat being in my ear 24 7 uh saying a bunch of shit um, but it's it's really cool to to share the worlds of vr chat with people to share the vr experience with people too on top of being a vtuber and kind of having a persona but in reality the persona is just me uh minus five percent or minus ten percent of the actual person who i am so it's it's uh it's really cool I think it's a really, really enjoyable experience, and I want to do stuff like YouTube eventually too, and and get more into that. But yeah, fair. No, that's absolutely fair. I was gonna say one of the things I wanted to ask in that regard. So, what kind of led you, um, you know, kind of to do like these world, you know, world hops and stuff? Like, I know you talked about Anti a little bit. You know, what what essentially. Mm-hmm what you know how how did y'all meet up and then kind of ultimately decide like hey we should do world hops um so he was actually already doing them uh by the time i met him and he had a he had a community established for a handful of months at that point um and i randomly came across him when i was hanging out with a a friend of his um who i was friends with so it was like a mutual friend Uh, uh, when we met, when we met up though, like we we hit it off immediately, you know, because um, he saw how invested into worlds I was, and that I had you know hundreds of worlds saved at that point, point. Um, and we would just go together and like find new worlds to look at. And I used um, uh, this map called the World Repository. It's like one of my favorite maps. Shout out to Blue Cat. Um, you can find so much cool shit on there. By the way, like there's. I think they're in the realm of a thousand worlds on there now. Um, and it's all portals. You can just go in there and just go through portals and find just amazing pieces of art. Uh, really cool stuff that's also really popular on Twitter and stuff like that, but also just really um, not well-known stuff. And it allows you to see so many worlds. And I <clears throat> would bring that to the events every Sunday and be like, oh my God, we got to check out this world. It's amazing. You know, I've been looking at this all week and I wanted to share this with the group. And um, yeah, it's like you get to just be a tour guide for immersive experiences. And that's, that's dope. I love that. Uh, that's fair. I would say, yeah, I, I'm familiar with World Repository. And if you, if nobody knows what World Repository mm-hmm. is, please go check it out. It's highly worth it. 
go take the yeah. extra time help like you have to go it's an amazing amazing tool when it comes to checking out you know newer worlds that you know maybe on twitter or maybe not see enough light of day it definitely yeah, useful tool. yeah um yeah because not everyone uses twitter and it's like an amazing tool within the game uh to go find stuff because like the trending tab is great and all but like it you see the same 30 worlds and it's like okay you gotta go f- find other shit and that's like the best place to find other shit <laughs> oh for sure i would say and it's constantly constantly changing um you know mm-hmm. um i'll say yeah if i say there's the of course like the new and noteworthy tab but when it comes to like manually reviewed stuff world repository is a good it's a good place to do it um yeah yeah but yeah so i was gonna say in that regard so when it comes to uh Sarpinski kind of to go back into Sarpinski again Mm -hmm. um so from your point of view kind of give like in a brief way because I you know I know it's a long event but like you know from the first event kind of as the event was going on what was going through your mindset you know like obviously there was a scheduling but like from the actual event start to finish itself you know, kind of give the audience a general idea of like what it's like to host an event like this. Um, so for the opening event, like <clears throat> it was really interesting because it was like, I got to go on stage. We don't have a stage mic or anything like that in the world. I still need to add shit like that and add like a, a way to say like, hey, can you please come to the stage? All that, you know, and have it go uh, world side uh, to everyone. But um the, the first step is really just, like, I had to go on stage and, like, announce everything to everyone. Say, like, hey, these are the rules. Please, you know, please uh, keep it 18 plus. Keep keep your avatars poorer, better, stuff like that. And, and so, like, as that was, you know, going on, I had the first person come on. I was like, Jesus, I hope this all works. <laughs> I've been testing it for weeks now. Um, and yeah, and then like a bunch of people started coming by and I was like checking my frame rate on my wrist. I was like, oh shit, I have 25 frames. Okay. Um, so maybe I got to <laughs> optimize by the next event because, uh, my shit was not running so good. Um, and then I was like, wow, I wish I had a better CPU right now. <laughs> I wish <laughs> I uh, hadn't bottlenecked my system so much, you know, stuff like that was going through my head. But also it was like, how's everyone doing? You know, is everyone having a good time? Are people on the floor? Are they listening to the DJ? And it was just awesome because we had so many different genres too that night. Like we had like um a hard style dj we had like a lot of garage drum and bass djs we had people doing more like rhythm and uh like kind of dub and dubstep adjacent stuff and it was just so cool um and i love doing my own set too like it, that was really cool too it's like being able to do my own set in my own club world at my own event that was like a really rewarding experience for me um and yeah like by the end i was so tired and um maybe maybe had a couple in me um where i was like okay guys i'm going to sleep like like not i'm not like going to brush my teeth or anything i'm gonna take this headset off and like fall on my bed <laughs> like it was that you know intense over time and just having all those people there but by the end people were congratulating me thanking me and all that stuff and it was it was just dope like i can't explain it <laughs> even better than that so yeah that's awesome. No, I, I say that that's really cool that, you know, just to hear from your perspective, um, it definitely, because there's so many venues when it comes to VR chat, right? You know, there's always something mm-hmm. new. There's always a new, you know, place for people to DJ at. Um, so to hear it kind of from a world creator perspective, it's actually really wholesome. Um, you know, I'll say the world's been out for like what? I'll say earlier this year, I think, if I remember correctly. Um, it's been out technically since May, like mid May. And I've been working on it since then, um, significantly. And there's a new update out now too as well. So yeah. And it's public, so feel free yeah. to check it out. <laughs> Hello everyone, just want to interrupt the video right here. Uh if you'd like to support me on any of my um variety of content, uh I do have a throne as well as a Ko-Fi. So make sure you go check that out. I uh, want to thank you all so much for watching. Let's get back into the video. 
Awesome. Yeah, I was say now I guess one of the questions I'll ask um cuz I guarantee some people might be wondering um cuz there are some venue worlds that it's a weird system on how to like use it. Is it a like open system or is there like a certain it's thing? Completely open. Cool. Yeah, it's literally just a video player. Um it's a low latency video player. So if you got like VR CDN or any sort of CDN Twitch uh youtube link that you want to throw in there it all works with that it goes the screens in the world go up to 8k um but stuff like vrcd and is limited to 720p so uh in the future i'd love to see a set that's like streamed out in 4k like in maybe five or ten years from now um but yeah like it's it's amazing like the screens in there are really really high def and uh i was really happy with all that all turned out but yeah like feel free to go in there watch youtube videos I recommend watching like 60 FPS anime intros um, in that world. It's really cool. Um, I, I'm really happy with that. And I'm not just saying that because I made it, but like people have said to me like, oh, this is really cool to just watch videos in too. So yeah, yeah. Fair enough. Well, I'll say, yeah, I'll say there's there's so many things that you could watch. And especially in like a, mm -hmm. in an area like that, like there, I couldn't even imagine some of the ideas that people have came up with when watching videos in that world. Yeah. Um, so I guess one of yeah. the questions I wanted to ask in that regard, right. You know, so you kind of went with like, um, like the whole octahedron, oct octahedron. Is that the word? I, I feel, yep. yep. I, I, I don't know math. I'm uncultured. I feel like <laughs> the past, the past couple episodes have been me being uncultured in certain topics. <laughs> which is one of the amazing reasons why this podcast exists um, is me learning about, you know, different point of views of different, cre different types of creators. Um, yeah, so yeah. I was going to say, cause I know I don't remember where in the world it is. I know it's in us. I want to say it's Las Vegas, but I was going to say, was the design of Slurpinski kind of, was it relevant to i think it's called the dome i think it, what is it called dome the sphere yeah the sphere yeah the sphere that's yeah. what it is you know did that come into mind when you know designing it or was it just strictly because of the the mathematical um, the biggest was it, I mean? the biggest uh yeah the biggest inspiration was uh after dark arcade actually um has this really cool part of it called the video dome and I loved going there. And actually, for a long time after Dark Arcade, like a year had gone by where that world wasn't available. And when it came back, it, um, you know, no, no problems with the devs or anything. But yeah, that world ran like, um, like shit for a while. And uh, I couldn't even like view it. And um, eventually they updated it. Now it runs fantastically. Um, and the frames are way better and, you know, kudos to the devs for figuring that out and, uh, getting it back up to scale. But I had seen this video dome within, um, after dark arcade and I was like, huh, it'd be really cool to have like a DJ set in here or have like some sort of musical event in here because it, it's just a room filled with video players. And I was like, how the fuck do you do this shit and make it run well? So I learned that. Um, <laughs> And put that into Octahedron, and then later that went into Shapinsky. And, and um, yeah, at Shapinsky, I really wanted to emulate that, but also kind of do my own thing and have stuff like little like uh, cherry blossom trees and have um, just kind of a difference to it and have it, have it be its own thing and create like my own unique style of that. Um, but yeah, later on, people are like, is this like the sphere? I'm like, yeah, yeah, it kind of is like the sphere. <laughs> um, didn't really think of the sphere that much when I was building it, but it was definitely like something, you know, I had seen and something that I wanted to maybe emulate subconsciously. But yeah, yeah. Fair. Uh, so I guess one of, one, of the, one of the other questions in that regard. Um, so you made the whole octahedron. So out of curiosity, and this is just where my mindset's going, is there any mm -hmm. plans to make like maybe another like shape and kind of going in that direction or is is this kind of like a one and done type yeah. deal we'll have to see you know i think um i would love the idea of making sherpinski 2 be like a super optimized version of this one and like not having it in like the kind of canyon mesa area that it's in and make it like a completely different world i've been thinking of making like a really ethereal one that's like almost like in the sky or in like a heaven sort of thing 
and having an octahedron or having like a immersive video player that surrounds all the uh, people in in the venue. But yeah, I wanna I wanna look into other shapes and using those as like a way to uh, create a unique video effect. But I also really like the idea of continuing to use the octahedron because let me tell you, uh, learning how to tile a material on Unity. Uh, those of you that know, uh, trying to do this within Unity, um, it's like pulling out all your fingernails and uh, hoping that shit just works on the next build. Because I had to rebuild the video player probably like 50, 60 times before the video looked correct in there. And that wasn't even for the first like set. It took like, by the second event, I had it figured out properly and... You know, tiling all that took time. So there's a, there's a part of me that wants to integrate that again, knowing that I've done all the work. But another part of me that says, oh, I could go above and beyond on the next one and really do something different and, and challenge myself. So kind of balancing those two things. And we'll see what happens. Awesome. Yeah. Now, I was, I was say with that, because it, it's, I was always curious, like, with, uh, like, what shapes could you use type thing? You know, like, yeah could, could you go like pyramid could you go because obviously cubes kind of a no-brainer right like that'd be an easy one yeah yeah but you want to go like above and beyond like you're saying you know there's yeah i'm curious as to what type of shapes you could potentially um come up with in that regard because there's there's a lot of shapes out there yeah you know? <laughs> there is um I've I've thought about that a lot. Yeah, I'm like I'm like, well, you know, I could do something like a like a dodecahedron, or I could do like a twenty sided dice, or something like that, and have it be like D and D themed or something, or do it do a lot of stuff with this um, venue, and do a lot of stuff with a future venue, and yeah, like it just all comes down to like how can I, you know, how can I shape this world? How can I make this um, video fit in properly and stuff like that? So I've thought a lot about that too. No, fair. I would say, yeah, there's, I'm, I'm curious to see what you can come up with. Um, assuming yeah. that eventually there will be like maybe a Serpinski two or maybe a different name yeah. world completely. So I'm definitely, yeah, definitely curious. Um, you know, and kind of, there's going to be a lot of back and forth on the topics. Cause, uh, mm -hmm. there, there's so much to talk about in this regard. Um, <laughs> cause world building is definitely, it's so expansive when it when it comes down to it yeah um so out of curiosity you know because you essentially made the world from nil you know uh so was there a lot of like blender work involved or was it like straight unity work i didn't use blender at all um one of the things i loved about unity was pro builder and i know people like artsy glitch and, and uh, some other creators have started with pro builder and then moved to blender but i really like pro builder right now and i do want to move to blender eventually um, but yeah, I wanted to build everything within uh, within the game and or within the engine, I should say. And you know, I used stuff like uh, a bunch of free assets for the trees and the mushrooms and stuff like that. That was all by uh, Mo Bubbler. The skybox was somewhere something I got from uh, Cortonix, um, who's also made other worlds in this game. And I love the black hole skybox that he made. Like he made those pretty recently, and Show showed them to me. I was like. Yeah, I'm putting that in my next world because uh, <laughs> they're free, you know, and it was all it was all free assets that I found. Um, that was like another thing to me. It's like, I, you know, I don't really have an income right now. So making this for free was like a big deal for me. Just using the tools that I had for free and to create something from nothing um, was really cool. And it really allowed me to be like creative with what I had and to put limitations on what I had. Even though I had those limitations, it pushed me to be more creative with what I could actually do. A friend of mine, Cal Calvladan, he created those booths you see actually at the um, the front. Like the DJ booths are actually custom modeled. Um, and he actually just created those for me for free. Because he saw my booths and he had a really funny reaction to it. He's like, yeah, I don't, I don't really like these booths. I'm just going to make you a new one. I was like ouch but okay and he made like an amazing model <laughs> and i was like oh shit okay yeah we i i hate this booth in comparison man uh actually i'll take that yeah yeah totally and i, I um you know i shaded it and added some like really cool um you know emissives to it and stuff like that and kind of did like the hue shifting like you see on my jacket very similar like um it's like the same shader actually they're both boyomi um so learning how to use shaders and stuff like that too was just so much fun like just all the little toggles you can make to really change the look and feel of something especially in vr and um you know going into that is just 
so different than looking at it on on Unity on the desktop. Yeah, no, I'll say as somebody who uh, has very, very little knowledge when it comes to shaders, it's super cool to see the amazing things that shaders can do. Um, of course, big shout out, like, you know, shader creators like Poyomi and, you know, um, yeah. all the other amazing, the, the list goes on and on. So I'm not even going to bother trying to make that list. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, <laughs> <It's huge. laughs> I was going to say out of curiosity, uh, was there any, uh, cause you said you use Poyomi for the world. Was there any thought of mm -hmm. maybe trying out other shaders for the world? Yeah, I actually used, um, God, I can't remember the name of it, but they made a psychedelic, psychedelic glitch shader. And, like, the exterior of the octahedron at Sierpinski is, um, is a shader with a noise map. And the noise map, uh, for those of you that don't know, is basically, like, a, <clears throat> like, a map of noise or a map of kind of, like, pixelization. And so it just picks up on on any texture you throw into it, any normal map you throw into it, and then it can kind of extrude those out and make them look like ripples. They almost look like these kind of psychedelic ripples, and they're like all animated and stuff. And so I spent like hours and hours like looking into this one shader for this one thing to get the exterior of the world really interesting. Um, and yeah, I can't remember who made that shader, but, uh, whoever did, um, I'll, uh, I'll make sure to message Novit about it and, uh, get their, get their, uh, credit out there. Cause it's an amazing shader. I love this shader so much and I loved working with it because it allowed me to do some really cool effects that are actually on the uh, new update as well. Um, and yeah, so main, yeah, mainly Poyomi and that shader and, um, it's kind of generic terrain shaders and that's pretty much all i used um and yeah it was it allows you to do so much on even just those three shaders so i look forward to looking working with new ones though too fair enough i'll say yeah there's uh there's so many so many amazing creators out there when it comes to shaders hopefully yeah. hopefully one day hopefully one day i can talk to some amazing shader creators it is on the docket i just got to reach out to them that's my fault don't judge me, um, but <laughs> um, because shaders are shaders make a lot of what VR chat is nowadays, um, with like Absolutely. emissions, audio link, you know, everything. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I was gonna say because we are we're starting to get to that point. Actually, surprisingly, that did not seem like <laughs> fifty. That did not seem like fifty minutes. Um, so I, I do want to ask like a few more questions before we wrap it up. Sure. Um, sure so thing. I was going to say with that, um, so you've had three events so far. Um, I would say mm -hmm. first and foremost, when, when's the next event first and foremost, or is there um, a planned event? Right now? Yeah, we don't have a planned event, but, uh, I'm thinking September, uh, it's too damn hot to play VR chat in the month of August where I live. I don't have AC in my house. So, uh, I, you know, I, I, I'm playing right now and it's fine and I'm in a place with AC at the moment, but normally I'm in another spot. Um, and yeah, it's too hot to play VR chat. So I'm waiting till September um, and we're going to do a comeback event. And, and um, as I, as I know um, when that date is going to be, I'm going to probably drop it on my Twitter um, and I'll throw that there and that'll go into VRC timeline as well. Um, so people will know about it. Uh, but yeah, right now it's it's unannounced. Um, but yeah, uh, getting this update out is kind of a new thing I'm working with. Working with VR uh, stage lighting and stuff like that too to really make it uh, pop for this new event. So yeah, fair. And I guess kind of to add on to that, um, you know, is it going to be like an uh, is it like a scheduled thing again, or you know, I guess I was kind of I'm going to have two parts of this question. So. Mm -hmm. So with this upcoming event, alleged upcoming event, um, is this going to be another mm -hmm. like scheduled set type event? Yeah, it is. Um, I want I want to do some new DJs. Um, you're going to see some new faces there. Um, one one of the things I really like about my space is like when I created it, there were people that had never DJed before. Uh, people like Boneless and Cena, who are also other VR creators. Um, they really 
wanted to do an event they really wanted to dj at an event but they're like getting into the club scene is such a pain in the ass so one of the things i love doing with shirpinski is saying hey you know i'm a noob too like i don't really fully know what i'm doing with djing but if you want to come dj here you are more than welcome to you know any any newcomers to the dj scene i'm more than welcome to have you you can play any genre at my events so um um, getting newcomers is important uh there's going to be people um I don't know if they want to be mentioned or not yet, but uh, yeah, there's somebody you know that is working on a DJ set, and uh, some of my other friends, including one of my mods at the event, um, he's actually going to do a DJ set as well, and he's got a uh, deck now, and he's work working on that stuff, so I'm excited, because this next one is going to have new people again, so yeah. Fair, and I was going to say, um, is it going to be another like uh, 30 minutes, hours type sets with this upcoming one? I think it's going to be, yeah, it's going to be 30 minutes to an hour uh, for each set. Um, so uh, the first one was just 30 minutes for everyone. This one is going to be, yeah, hour, up to hour sets as well. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair enough. Um, out of curiosity was um, to kind of one of the last questions I have for you. Have you ever thought about doing um, like an open deck event? using oh yeah i mean we have open decks yeah we have open decks after every event um usually by that point people are tired and want to go to bed so i understand that um but yeah like i've i've thought about doing an entirely open deck and having just people sign up with me and i you know pull up a google doc on my wrist or something right and <laughs> go through that list and and get people to come through um because i think that'd be really really fun i've had people open deck a few times though too but yeah, I've thought about that idea as well. I gotcha. I guess one of the in one of the last ones. Um, so you, you're talking about using the ICDN, Twitch. Um, is it really up to the DJ's discretion on like or YouTube? You said like, is it just up to the DJ's discretion essentially? Yeah, exactly. I I don't have VRCDN, and I don't really have a good way. I mean, I could stream out of VRCDN, but I think for me. Uh, given the way I have to record my sets, um, I usually just go with YouTube because it's higher bit rate. And uh, so I'm just kind of up there like, you know, I'm not actually doing shit in my room. But uh, for people that want to do it live, you know, there's that availability. And we have, I have no discretion over that. Like, that's up to the DJ. If they want to do a recorded set, that's up to them. Um, I'm more than willing to have them on there because they're just bringing music there at the end of the day. And you know, whatever they mix together, whether it's live or not, I don't really have a, I don't really have a problem with that. And yeah, that's the, that's the beauty of VR in a way. Hell yeah, absolutely. Well, I'll say, yeah. First and foremost, Ref, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. This was very insightful. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> it's very insightful to say the least. Um, so before we call it done and you know done and over with mm -hmm. um you know where can people find you you know whether it's you know stuff for the description stuff to put on the screen you know just kind of tell people where they can find you and uh okay. yeah, yeah feel free to take it away yeah um if you want to follow me on twitter uh my twitter is uh reth sogan vt like vtuber um so yeah reth sogan vt that's s-o-g-e-n a lot of people get that wrong uh and then uh another thing uh you can do is you can uh follow my youtube channel which is also reth sogan vt um and that's where i'm, I'm gonna be i post all my dj sets there i post a few twitch clips there uh and then uh yeah twitch.tv slash reth sogan vt as well uh that's my twitch uh, I don't stream super regularly anymore, but uh, yeah, if you want to catch me there, um, sometimes I stream Minecraft with my friend Chopal and uh, do some other stuff there. So yeah, um, feel free to follow me there and feel free to join uh, the Sierpinski group and server and, and uh, I'll send that over uh, as well. Um, so that'll be on the screen, hopefully. But yeah, yeah. All right. Well, yeah. Please make sure to go check out uh rest amazing world sarpinski make sure to go check out all her links as well excuse me i was trying not to cough but yeah go make sure to check out her stuff <laughs> she does awesome stuff um but yeah well once again thank you again for coming on the podcast this, this was a lovely Absolutely. time um yeah. well i'll say with that ladies gentlemen everyone inside the outside the ballpark this has been episode 25 
of the Nova Notes podcast. I do want to thank you so much for watching. And if, you, of course, you guys enjoyed it, please make sure to leave a like, you know, drop a comment down below, maybe ask some questions about, you know, the Slurpinski world. But also, you know, if you're coming back to watch some of the other episodes, you know, feel free to hit that subscribe button. Why not? You're already coming back anyway. And with that, I do want to thank you once again for coming on the podcast, Reth. And of course, thank you all for watching. And I will see you in the next episode. Take care and peace.